welcome to the podcast, Nikki. Thanks for having me, Susie. Oh, it's so lovely to have you because I, I've only met you once and it was a couple of years ago. I came to your house actually for a calligraphy event which you hosted and it was in the days when I thought I might get into calligraphy, which I did briefly mm. for, for a week. Yeah, I got, I got <laughs> for a all, week. <laughs> all the kit, all the kit, and decided this was going to be my new mindfulness activity that I would do. And it kind of fizzled out quite rapidly. But it was a gorgeous afternoon. I loved chatting to you and seeing where you produce all your beautiful products. And I had in my head then, and this was a while ago, it was just before I think the pandemic hit, that I would get you on the podcast one day. So it's taken us two years oh, <laughs> that you're here. And here. <laughs> Thank you. Finally. So I've had a really stressy morning, actually. And that's why I think it's really appropriate that we're having this conversation today, because it was just one of those days where I was throwing a curveball. I didn't get to do what I was meant to do and then I got really stressed and like now I've got 15 things to do and I don't know which to do first and crikey Nikki's coming at midday I haven't done this, 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 this and I actually thought gosh am I going to have to cancel and I thought I'm not going to do that that's really rude to cancel on the day you know just calm down and see what you can do but I think so many of us find ourselves in that position regularly don't we yes yeah like every day I mean I think yeah. this is a lot of the clients I see, it is just it's how we live now. I think the yeah. pandemic was good for a lot of things because it made us slow down, mm. and you know we didn't we weren't bombarded with having to be here, there, and everywhere, yeah. which I think was a welcome relief to a lot of people. Um, but now that you know we can get back out and stuff, I think it's just we've easily fallen into the trap again of taking on too many things or um, you know just feeling on edge all the time yeah. and stressed out. Yes. Um, Yes, yeah, it's and very life, common. Life just throws stuff at you. I mean, this was something that I hadn't foreseen. I was going to do this, 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 you know, and I had time to do it, but then pff, something was chucked at me and it just threw everything out. And then I immediately got stressed. Yeah. So, and just started clanging around the kitchen because that <laughs> seemed like something to do. Banging <laughs> pans, putting them away, you know. So um, I'm just so happy that I'm having this conversation with you now. So I'd love to start, Nikki, by you telling our listeners how you got to be doing what you do now. Like, what brought you to this? So I'm a naturopath, which is a nutritionist and herbalist, and I hadn't even heard what a naturopath was at the time of even, um, well, when I, I suffered when I was a teenager, a whole lot of period issues. So I had... I got my period and then I maybe a couple times and then I didn't get my period again. And being 14, 15, I didn't really care, just didn't care at all. And we moved to Hong Kong at that stage from Australia. We moved to Hong Kong and I think the change, there's a whole lot of things that could have um, caused the lack of periods. But what the main concern was for me is I started breaking out with acne and it just got worse and worse and worse. And um, I used to get facials and I remember um, the, the lady that was doing my facial said, oh, you should go and you should go on the pill. That will help clear up your acne. Oh. So anyway, we went, I went to the doctor and said, you know, I haven't had a period and my acne was just so bad. How old were you at this point? So 60, uh -huh. 15, 60. Yeah. And I remember they took blood tests, mm. um, but I don't remember them saying anything to me. All they gave me was the pill. And I just took it, you know, and uh, within about three months, I'd say my skin was a lot better. And actually, I started getting boobs, everything. Because at the time, I was so skinny. And yeah. um, I so I loved it. I was like, this is great. <laughs> this is great. Oh, I hated it. I was also really skinny. <laughs> yeah. I hated it. I remember writing to Jackie magazine. I don't know if you had Jackie in no. Australia. But that was like the teen magazine. I remember writing this letter. I mean, it's so sad now. Saying, how do I, what can I eat or oh. take to like bolt me up? Because my ankles are so skinny and, and I and I'm trying to pull my jumper over my arms because I'm just so scrawny. Isn't it funny? Yeah. And I remember a guy saying Chester draws to me with like, cause I had no boobs. And like, yeah. so that memory is still there from, yes. you know, and it crushes you. Oh, it does. Oh gosh. Yeah. But yeah, so then I, so then I gained the boobs and I was like, ooh, yes. And then my skin cleared up. But then about a year on the pill, I um, noticed I just was getting bloated all the time and and quite i just felt re i just felt swollen so i i just was puffy in my face puffy in my belly um and just didn't feel quite right on it 
And, but I was so, and then when I finished school, so I stayed on it till I finished school. I went to boarding school, went back to Australia for boarding school. And then my first year out, I lived in Japan for a year, studying Japanese. And I remember thinking, I'm going to stay on the pill because I wanted to come off it because I was gaining a lot of weight and this bloatingness. And, but I was so nervous about coming off the pill and the acne returning that I stayed on it while I was in Japan. And then I came back from Japan, I went to college at Melbourne University and I was studying art science. And again, I remember thinking, I don't want to come off the pill because of my, because of my skin. That's all I was thinking about was my skin, vanity. And, um, but I knew, knowing that it wasn't quite right. um, And also just not absolutely having no understanding about my reproductive system, like at all. But I do remember thinking, I want children. It was one thing I knew I wanted was a family. And I remember going to the doctor and I must have been talking about the pill. I can't remember if I'd started natural medicine at this stage, but I'll get to that. But I remember going to the doctor saying, um, I'm thinking, can I come off the pill? Like, um, will I be able to have babies? And I remember it was a male doctor and he said, why would you come off the pill? Um, just come off it when you want to have babies. And then, you know, if you don't have babies, we've got, we've got drugs for that as well. And I remember just thinking, Oh my God, like, again, not knowing what was going on with me. Anyway, my sister was still living in Hong Kong at that stage and she had seen a naturopath in Hong Kong. And she came, when she graduated from school, she said, I wanna be a naturopath. And I was like, what's a naturopath? And she brought home the course guide for naturopathy. And it had things like nutrition, herbal medicine, anatomy and physiology. And I was just like, oh, I couldn't put it down. I was thinking, I want to do this as well. And uh, we went to the open day and there was a lady who probably was in her 30s. Um, So, I mean, I'm 20 at this age, 20 at this time. Um, She might have been in her mid 30s um, at the open day. And just the way she was talking, I mean, my sister and I just sat there, go captivated by her. And I was just thinking, I want to be her. I want to be her. Anyway, we then went home and said to my dad, we want to study natural medicine. And my dad said, I will not have my daughters studying monkey business. Ooh, wow. And, um, that was we very like, damning. Oh, yeah. So we went on this high to like, no, you won't be. Because, do- I mean, it was, we're talking like late 1990s. When, like, so it was, when was it that I would have been? It would have been 99. Um, you know, and I didn't know any naturopaths. You know, it was very... I mean, everyone, it was out there. Everyone I knew was studying medicine, Mm -hmm. um, accountancy, you know, just business, whatever, and lawyers. And here Sarah and I were going, we want to be naturopaths. Anyway, bless my dad. He did say, you can defer your degree Mm -hmm. at Melbourne University. You can give it a go. And if you love it, you you can continue. And if you don't, you've then at least got, you can go back to, you know, studying art science at Melbourne University and finishing off that course Um, so you deferred so so yeah so we absolutely loved it and every lecture I was just sitting there you know absolutely loved it and ended up continuing it and it was in a lecture on polycystic ovarian syndrome that he she was putting up all the symptoms and all the signs and I was thinking I think that's that's what I've got that's me so and I went to the doctor with like you know with asking can you please test for all of these hormones that we were taught um and get an ultrasound because i think i've got pcos and the doctor was a little bit reluctant to do it but she said okay i'll do it and it did it came back confirmed that i had polycystic ovarian syndrome and it was so nice to one have a i know we don't want to talk about labels but to finally know actually what was going on with me and then when we were studying um pcos you obviously give protocols on how to help address it and a lot of it is lifestyle and diet and there's lots of herbs that can help with it too so i came off the pill and i did all the dietary changes and i took the herbs and everything like that and my periods within about nine months went from being completely irregular to like, I remember it being every six weeks for so long and then it went to five weeks and then it went to four weeks and it's been four weeks regular ever since. And And how old are you now, Nikki? 43. So my my skin cleared up, I lost the weight naturally, like just everything. And it was, 
it was so liberating to know what was going on with my cycle and what it meant and 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 being in control of it and it was the first time that I just thought this is so powerful and we do not get taught anything at school about really about our reproductive system what we can do to help with our nutrition food lifestyle all of these kind of things so um yeah I just I just loved it. And so when we when I graduated, I knew I wanted to go down the hormone route and help other women in the similar situations to me. And so that's what I've been doing pretty much. So I graduated when I was 24, 25. And uh, I then, uh, well, I then thought, right, rather than going straight into practice, I'm going to go and do a three month trip around the UK. And I never went back. So I've been here now. <laughs> Oh, you didn't Since just stay in Manchester. Well, no, I was in London. Right. But my husband is from Wilmslow. So we oh. moved up here. Again, we moved up here for six months because we were uh -huh. going to move to Australia. Yeah. And we haven't left. I've been in Wilmslow now for nearly 11 years. I'm just like, what? How has this happened? Um, but I mean, it's been, well, it's our it's game. been great. Oh, it's, bless you. <laughs> it's Wilmslow's game, definitely. Definitely. I was just so taken with your little room where you make these beautiful herbal remedies yes and well yeah in fact i used one of them yes about about a month ago maybe less even it was i can't remember when it was maybe it was about three weeks ago but i was given a file of your bath salts the detox bath salts and the funny thing is that I'm not a bath person. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I, I'm a shower person. I, I know all about how good it is to have a bath and I often preach it, <laughs> but I just don't have one myself because I, I don't know, always, I always thought it was a bit of a waste of time and by the time you run it and you hear about these people that sit in a bath for 40 minutes every night or an hour every night and it just, I think who's got time to sit there for an hour. <laughs> but I, I was given this and it looked very beautiful and I could tell this was a very nice thing. I was actually given it on a, I went on a half day retreat and in our goodie bag, there was this little file of your detox bustles. And I had it sitting in my bathroom for about maybe a month. And I would look at it and think, I really must use that. I really <laughs> must use that one day. But like, oh, I'm not a bad person. So yeah, yeah. And it just sat there and I kind of felt guilty looking at it because I knew um. that it was something that was probably very nice and I was just ignoring it. And then what happened was, oh, I know when it was, it was the, was it the equinox? Maybe it was the equinox that we had just mm, recently. Yeah. It was something like that. It was something where it was a, a new something. And I suddenly thought, tonight's the night. <laughs> tonight's the night. I'm gonna have a bath. And I actually announced to my family, everyone, I'm gonna have a bath. <laughs> and I did the whole, I lit the candles. There was actually a candle from you in the goodie bag yeah, as well. Yeah, I love it. And threw the salts in. And the most amazing thing happened, okay? I, I I wasn't in there for that long, probably only about 20 minutes. Yeah. I felt something being sucked out of me. I know that's really, really bizarre, but I, I felt lighter as if something had just been released. Mm. And this was Himalayan bath salts, which are very detoxifying, yep. aren't they? Yeah. But this was more of on, a, on like a kind of an energetic yeah. level because they do work on that yeah. on that level as well. And I, I felt it, it was like a kind of, like a, something being drawn out, if I could put it that way. And I came out and I felt floaty. That would be the only word I could use. This. I felt floaty and really calm, really chilled. And I just did some stretches, like yoga stretches, and I went, went to bed all cozy with a book. And it was just <laughs> lovely. But the weird thing was, I still felt floaty the next morning mm. and, and it was a busy morning. It was like a midweek morning and it was like 11 o'clock in the morning. I was thinking, I still feel like I've been in a spa in Thailand for a month. I was thinking this is just bizarre and I attributed it to those Himalayan bath salts. And the funny thing, even funnier thing was that people here that will have heard this perhaps in a, in a previous episode, but I had been on a magic mushroom retreat in Amsterdam a few weeks previously, had had a horrendous experience, <laughs> horrendous. And while I was trying to kind of get myself back to me, one of the things that the therapists recommended in a whole host of things to try and sort out my heart palpitations, which I'd got from the mushrooms, 
she said a Himalayan salt bath and I ignored it completely because I wasn't a bath person after all and then when I got in that bath I wondered if something had shifted from the pre I'd had mm. the mushrooms about a month before I love this about you, Susie, by the way. Yes, and it's very unexpected. <laughs> it's very unexpected. I don't even drink. Oh I hardly drink. Gosh. So it was, a, it was a big shock to everyone that I'd gone to Amsterdam to take a psychedelic drink, but I did. Oh anyway, and I suspect that some, some residual something shifted in that bath because I've had subsequent baths with Himalayan salt and I didn't have the same experience. It was lovely, but there was something happened on that day in that bath, which I can't quite explain. Well, it sounds amazing. It's like, yeah. I mean, the, it's got his Himalayan and it's with Epsom salts as well. Uh -huh. And they're both, the Himalayan is very detoxifying. Yeah. Um, but it's so full of minerals, especially especially the Epsom salts is magnesium. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's it draws everything out. So it is, it's that detoxifying thing, but you've also got the magnesium goes through the skin and helps yeah. you to relax. Yes. So it's, it has a kind of, so it bypasses the digestive system rather than taking magnesium orally. Yeah. Getting into an Epsom salt bath with... Um, uh, you can absorb magnesium that way and that's why it's it's it, it makes you feel relaxed but also bath itself without anything in it will help that too it's like um, hot water so especially at night time you want to drop your core te body temperature to f facilitate sleep um, so that's why when we're really really hot not that it gets that hot in this country but you know when sometimes in summer and it's so hot you can't sleep yeah. um, when you get into a bath, it obviously, your core body temperature rises because it's a hot bath. But when you get out, it drops and it drops lower than what it was before you got in. So the act of, that's why a bath or even a shower will do the same thing. Um, again, is just, is so therapeutic. But then you can, the lovely thing is, is you can add in the salts and they've also got really lovely essential oils in there as well to help the process even more. Um, and then lighting a candle. It's all just little rituals that you can start doing because the main thing with stress is we can't avoid it. It's all about how we manage it and how, and I just think if we have little systems in place set up throughout the day or even the evening, it buffers the stress. So it's just everything that can offset it. So having like, I mean, I go on about tea, but having like a nice cup of tea and actually just sitting there and enjoying it and slowing your breath down for five minutes in between, you know, on a crazy day, that just helps lower your, um, like sort of, it helps get us into what we call the parasympathetic nervous system. So a lot of the time we're in the sympathetic, which is we that fight or flight, and we're doing, 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 doing. Our blood is going to our muscles, our heart and our brain to kind of, well, that fight or flight is that we need to be alert, um, which is fine short term, but long term can cause absolute havoc on our hormones. And, um, and we're not equipped for it for long term. And so when we just get our body into a sort of slowing things down, like having a mindful moment with a cup of tea or having a bath or going for a walk in nature, listening to some music, it, it just little simple things. What it does, it tells our bodies that we're under no threat because our bodies cannot distinguish between a life-threatening threat, a thought of something bad happening, or just physical mental stress. It, we all, our stress response happens, it's the same anytime. So if we, and our, and our body's all about protecting ourselves from survival. So if we feel like we're not under any type of threat, which is like we're not going to when we slow our breath down, our bodies go, oh, okay, no, no one's coming to eat us. I can, I can function properly. Yeah, our yeah. hormones can work how they're meant to work because they're not in this. So usually it's that cortisol adrenaline that takes over when we're anxious, when we're stressing out. And that that's what has an effect on our hormonal system. So rather than progesterone getting produced, rather than us ovulating every month properly, all of this kind of stuff, we end up um, we end up with this a lot of the time, this discrepancy between estrogen and progesterone. And um, and this is where it can cause a lot of hormonal issues, especially um, too much estrogen to progesterone, which a lot of people, you know, the estrogen dominant things people have heard about. Um, but that's things like, you know, heavy bleeding, period pain, fibroids, um, uh, PMS, anxiety, sleep, all of these kind of things. And um, and we, what we want to try and do is bring this balance back again. And lifestyle things 
are the quickest way of doing that. No pill, you know, no drug. It's actually about these little lifestyle acts. And that's what's so powerful about, um, uh, and you know, and again, sometimes, as you sort of said with the bath, Sometimes we can put off things that we think aren't going to, you know, like, well, oh, that's going to take too, not essential. It's not essential. So in your head, yes. you're thinking, that's not helping me and get through my to-do list. Things to-do list. <laughs> when early you take time out to run a bath, you know, yeah. wait while it fills up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, um, I, I find a lot of, um, so a lot of the women I see that um, have never done yoga mm-hmm. and they're very much into high intensity exercise, you know, hit training or running. Yeah. You know, when I mention yoga to them, they freak out because they think they think one boring, two you're not sweating, so your body's not doing anything, um, and and so it's like it's so what I, I think a lot of people think right. I've got to be working out really hard, intense. I've got to be mm-hmm. sweating in, for it to be doing good for me. Where actually, I mean, exercise is a stress on our body. So if you're already yeah. stressed out and you go do more exercise on top of that. All your body is thinking is, what am I running away from? And I've got to use up all of my reserves to to keep to keep functioning at that sort of height. And actually, when you step away and you understand how the body works, you don't feel guilty about taking time off. You don't you realize that actually yoga is so beneficial then or sometimes, you know, going to bed a little bit earlier would be better than going and doing something high intense for your body, you know, and, yeah. for, and for your overall health long term. But it is such a mind it's a mindset, isn't it? set. It's it what really you get taught is. as well, isn't yes. it? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I often get invited to very, very early, even yoga stuff, like meeting at five o'clock in the morning. I'm like, I'm sure it's lovely. There's <laughs> absolutely no way that I'm sacrificing any sleep mm-hmm. to go to and, and I know it'll be a lovely thing and everyone will love it. But for me, like, I don't want anything getting in the way of my sleep. And that's just sacred. Yep. But I love what you said about these little rituals, because I think that's what it was. And I lit the candles and it, it felt like a beautiful self-care ritual. And I instantly felt different. And it was quite a remarkable shift to the point that I was doing, it came to the end of the year and I did a, which I do at the beginning or the end of each year, a list of things I want to do for the following year. So it's 22 things for 2022. And I had a real emphasis this year on self-care things. So one of the things I put was that I would treat myself to a weekly Himalayan salt Mm -hmm. bath, Mm -hmm. which I've kept up so far. Mm -hmm. And I, because for me, I totally get it now. I totally get the bath thing. And it's like, yes, you, you, I can afford to take out half an hour <laughs> in an evening and, and I really and I found that my thoughts slowed and I was able to I think because it was the equinox I was really thinking about affirmations and things which which I do anyway in the morning but there was something about being in the water mm. which really amplified mm. the whole effect yeah so it wasn't just the physical effects of of the heat etc etc it was very much a mental thing as well mm. and an emotional calming resetting and then of course once you're out of there you don't feel like going to to clean the oven do you you know because you're you're chilled and that's why i thought well i'll just do some gentle yoga yeah. stretches when i say yoga i probably spent a minute yeah but that's <laughs> doing the child's yeah. place. Don't, it wasn't anything huge yeah but then it was nice to get under the covers and have mm. my library book i was reading a really nice novel oh. and it's just a lovely way to end the day as you say it's a buffer between the busyness, busyness of the day, the go, 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 and let's tick off the next thing and sleep because we can't go to sleep when we're in a state of stress. And most of us are trying to do that, aren't we? Trying to get into bed, still checking the the iPad Mm -hmm. and getting Mm -hmm. back to colleagues or whatever it is, Mm -hmm. and then expect to put our head down Mm -hmm. and just drop off to sleep. It doesn't happen. No, and you're right. And I think, yeah, it is about like, again like the whole bath experience and i think like you're saying with yoga i mean i remember first when i first did yoga i never really liked it and it was only yeah. until after a time i then i then really got into it and also i do think it helps with your instructor when it comes to yoga yes. um, yeah finding someone that you yeah. that you I gel adore, with i do two types of yoga yep. and i adore both my yep. instructors i think yeah. you've got to don't you yeah. too um so it's like if you if you're someone that's like has tried yoga but didn't like it i'd just say keep find someone else because you'll yeah. find an instructor that you'll yes. just click 
But I, I came around making the products because, you know, obviously we know meditation is so important, but I knew myself that I would not just sit down and meditate for 10 minutes. It's challenging. It's challenging. It? Yeah. It's so challenging. And I still haven't really mastered it. And I feel like if I, and I still, that's why again with yoga, for instance, because there's always a meditation at the end, um, but it's a guided meditation. I, I can get into it there. Um, but I sort of thought, um, you know, when I, was when I was talking to my clients and sort of, you know, they all knew that they were too busy and they wanted to calm down kind of thing. I just, when I, when I look at my products, a lot of them, a lot of the products is kind of in a way like the bath, like the, the vial that you had, um, to, uh, to get people to slow down. So having that cup of tea, the whole, getting them to be the ritual of having it, the lighting, the candle, if you're doing something in a way, yes. it is quite meditative anyway, it because is. you are slowing everything down. Yeah. You can, it's, you know, again, it goes back to the breath. Um, but it gets you set up to then if you then wanted to go on like that yoga, you would never have done a little bit of yoga, even though it was for one minute, had you not had the bath. Like you probably no, you would never have done that. No, one thing triggered the Another. next. Yeah. And that's what's so wonderful about once you start with just a chink, just with a, chink. a bit of self-care, whether it's the cup of tea or something, it then gives you the headspace to think, well, maybe I will go to bed 10 minutes earlier and, yeah. and just get a, a novel out. Yes, so and that's what it is. I yeah. think, again, like um, you, it's trying to not to make things hard, you yeah. know, and it, or a chore. Like thinking, yeah. oh, I've got to take off self care. We'll never, do them. We'll never do them if it's a chore. Never, yeah. never, ever, ever. And you want to enjoy it, and you want to. Um, but that's the thing. It's trying not to think. I've got to do half an hour of meditation a day, or I've got to do half an hour of yeah. this, or something like that. It's too much, and it's until you start something and then all of a sudden you may then end up doing something for half an yes. hour but if you thought that you'd have to do it for half an hour to begin with you chances never are no, start. no no it's too no. overwhelming isn't it it's too intimidating too overwhelming. yeah and you think who can afford half an hour to just yeah. sit there <laughs> doing nothing <laughs> doing nothing so yeah i'm i was surprised myself with the bar thing and i'm definitely going to invest in more Himalayan bar salts and stuff like that. So tell us a little bit more about the tea. Yes. We understand the ritual of making the tea and taking that moment rather than, it's very different from sticking a mug in the microwave because it's gone cold and, and people want to be oh It's a very different vibe, <laughs> isn't it? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I don't know. I don't own a microwave. I think I might be. No, here. I, oh, you I don't either. Do I never do that, but I do know people who do do oh, that. Oh, gosh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, well, the nice, the good thing about my tea as well is if it goes cold, it's just as yummy. So, yeah. you know, you, I would never drink a cold, milky like, oh, it would be I disgusting. mean, you just wouldn't, would you? With a skin on top. Oh, probably. I'll stop. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so it came about because obviously, Herbs are, I, I just love herbal medicine. I think because it changed my life. And, um, but I, with herbs, you've got, of a plant of a herb, you've got the leaves and the flowers. Mm -hmm. So everything above ground um, is you can get all the properties and the essential oils from the leaf and the flowers in a herbal infusion. So um, adding boiling water to the tea. So all my, all my herbs, herbal teas mainly are, the leaves and the flowers of a plant and that and they're usually the most nicest tasting as well yeah. and the prettiest so the this one here is my female harmony which i think is the prettiest one because of the rose petals and chamomile but um so the tea is so i make herbal teas like that using the the um the leaf and the flowers of different plants with different properties um and each tea has a different like female harmony is very good for people with peace um PMS type symptoms, mm -hmm. um, irregular cycles, bloating, that type of thing. Um, and then they usually accompany a tincture. So a herbal tincture is anything under the grounds, like roots or barks, anything that's really fibrous, you need alcohol to extract the properties out. Mm -hmm. So they're very bitter. A lot of the, 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 the tinctures I have are not very pleasant tasting, but you only take a little bit amount. You only take about half a teaspoon mixed yeah. in a little bit of water. And it's usually twice a day, again, depending on the herb. Yeah. Um, but uh, and what I tend to do with my hormone kits, I've created these kits online that you get a tea and you get a tincture mm -hmm. because a lot of the roots are really beneficial. Say, for instance, um, if we look at my period comfort 
uh, kit that's got a herbal tea. Um, this would helps with period pain and, and discomfort and things like that. You've got um, a tea that you can drink that's warming, that's um, really relaxing. Um, it's It's got ginger in it, which helps with circulation to the pelvic area. Yeah. Um, and it's just a, a beautiful kind of nice tasting tea that you can enjoy when you're feeling discomfort. And then it comes with a tincture called cramp bark and black hole, which um, uh, one of the most powerful antispasmonics in the herbal world yes. and you can take that acutely during the time of your month where you're getting the cramps yeah. instead of things like ibuprofen um, or paracetamol or anything mm -hmm. like that it's like um, you can use instead of or with so sometimes um, people can reduce the dose that they're taking of any sort of pharmaceutical medication when they're taking the tincture yeah. but the tincture that tincture in particular you don't take all month you just take a couple of days before your period's due and then throughout to help with the symptomatic relief. But something like the tea, I would say, you wanna drink every day, at least one cup a day. Three cups is what we call therapeutic, like it's actually a, like medicine. But one cup a day throughout your whole cycle um, helps with a lot of the herbs in there help with, they all have sort of like an affinity to the reproductive system. Yeah. So it's it's just very beneficial and, um, and yeah, and I just think tea and the ritual of making tea is, again, therapeutic in the sense that it calms everything down. And it's sort of like um, people, you know, I get so many messages, people saying, I just love, I love making your tea, like the whole ceremony behind it. You've got the herbs that have specific properties, depending on what symptoms that you have, um, you would choose which which tea would be best for you. Um, and you can mix and match teas. You can have, you know, a harmony then and a sleep one at night or things like that. Um, but, uh, but again, any tea would do. It's just, because you're still getting that benefit. Um, it's just what I've, I call this therapeutic tea. So you're kind of bringing you know, you're bringing up, especially if you've got symptoms, um, these teas are working on that. Yeah. Um, and, and they're powerful. Like they're they really, powerful. really so powerful. Gentle, yeah. But so powerful. Yeah. And that's what's really, I love, love herbal medicine. In fact, I, about 10 years ago, I did a short course at Neil's Yard. In oh Sarasota, yeah. My yeah. Favorite, yeah. Favorite, favorite ever shops. And it was with a herbalist. Yes. Called Jasper Lunder. Yeah. Who's wonderful. And we covered lots of things. We learned how to make tinctures and syrups, you know, cops. I love syrup it. And yes. All different things. And it's really not difficult yeah. once you know a few ground rules and you're confident enough to try. And I've been making tinctures ever since. Amazing. And so every year I'll make like um, a pick elderberries and make an elderberry yep. tincture. Which, which is, does taste nice, actually. Yeah. It's probably yes, the only one. It is the only one, actually. And I put in cinnamon and all sorts of oh. things. And, it, and it's really nice to take. And the kids know, we all know that this is first sign of a sore throat or anything that we might be coming down with a cold. Everyone just knows, right, where's the, the elderberry tincture? And, and, and it really does work. And cramp bark, mm. so you, you neglected to say that it stinks and it tastes absolutely disgusting <laughs> you missed that bit out sorry i do i actually do have some in my kitchen it is pretty gross um yeah it is i think it's really one of the worst but so effective so effective, so effective. i bought some because um my daughter was suffering a bit yeah with, with cramps yeah and i've taken it and i would say it is as effective personally speaking i think it's as, as effective as a paracetamol yeah but i found it to be just incredible luckily i don't suffer too much but it it really does work i mean this is not just oh try this bit of smelly stuff and it's like a placebo this these are really powerful aren't they? they've been used for centuries yep. more and there maybe. are there are studies now to show yeah. like um you know and randomized proper clinical studies to show the difference between paracetamol and crab bark and how yeah. they work oh, really? and yeah and that. how they can be more effective um so there is there is you know it's just unfortunate that there's not enough money behind natural medicine mm. to have more research done in things um but they are they can they are they're so effective the, the only downside is as you said the tinctures are quite i mean you know they're quite intense but yeah. you don't take a lot and you can mix it with a bit of juice and to tell you the truth i i find most people Adolescence, teenagers probably a little bit different because it's it is quite unique. But if something's helping someone, they just get on with it. You know, they just oh, think for sure, for yeah, sure, just get for on sure. with this. Absolutely, and and I, I just find it amazing. Yeah. 
But most people don't know about cramp bark or, or a lot of other, other herbal remedies, which is a shame really, because they just think, right, okay, period pain, let me buy my ibuprofen or yeah. paracetamol or alternate them, whatever it is. And we just head straight for the chemist. And I think obviously that wasn't the case. If you go back, not that far back in history, it was very normal for people to make their own herbal remedies. It was just a skill yeah. like cooking, like any other. And we've really lost that, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about there's so many medicinal plants in everyone's gardens and yeah. people wouldn't even know that they're that they're there or what they do or what their actions are. But yeah, it, it's just, we just don't get taught it. And then we don't have, if your parents didn't, you know, tell you about them, you know. I mean, I found that with me. We, I mean, we had, I had no idea, like no yeah. idea about herbs, herbal medicine, yeah. anything until I started studying it. Um, and I wouldn't be able to tell you what what plant was what or anything like that at the beginning, you know. So um, we do, we have lost it all. We have yeah. definitely lost it all. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think even with a tiny bit of knowledge, because this is not something that you, you need to study to be a naturopath or you need to go on some extensive, expensive course. You don't need any of that. You can just very easily acquire a little bit of knowledge and think, oh, okay, I have a lemon balm plant in my garden. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know that, I know what that does. It's calming and it's like a hug in a mug and I can pick some leaves and yep. add some hot water yep. and that will be calming. So I think it's yep. just so empowering for people to know a few key plants, what they do and how to use them. And it can be as, as something as simple as making a tea. Everyone can make a tea, can't they? Well, that's one of the best ways of, like lemon balm, the best ways of having it is, is fresh in, you know, boiling water. Peppermint the same, it's very yeah. cooling. It's great for digestive problems. Nettle is everywhere as well. <gasps> so fabulous. good for you. Yeah. High in iron, it's really cleansing. It's great for people that suffer hay fever as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's gosh it's in so many of my teas because it's so um full of nutrition yeah. um but you can make nettle tea you can make nettle soup there's like so many um so many recipes you can find online yeah. using these uh using nettle um you just want to make sure when you pick them you're using you're wearing using gloves, gloves and yeah. pick from above because yes. down below it might be full of um yeah. animal urine <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> um but, but and, once you know once you know to not go where the dogs wee Yes. And, and you just take the top two sort of leaves and you've got gloves on. It's really easy. And I've put them in a juice with apple. Yeah. And it's delicious. Yeah. It's a really nice tasting thing. It's beautiful in soup. Yeah. Beautiful in pesto. So many. And it's free. And it's free. It's free. And it grows and it's free. everywhere. It is everywhere. It's everywhere. And as you said, elderberries, you can pick mm -hmm. elderberries, um, make your own syrups. Um, which is really easy to do as well. Yeah, because it sounds like that would be very complicated. Because no. you think of a medicine you buy, it's got a ton of ingredients, think how on earth am I going to replicate a cough syrup in my kitchen? But it really is simple. I would say it's much easier than baking a cake. I'm a terrible baker. Like mm -hmm. I know nobody mm -hmm. ever asked me to make a dessert mm -hmm. because I'm just <laughs> really, really crap at any, any sort of baking. But I, even I can make a syrup. It's, it's really very straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. And I think when you start to grow your own herbs and even if you don't have a garden, you know, just having some herbs in a pot in your, on your kitchen. Yeah. It's just I think as much as you can start adding things into your already diet because they're full of nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it just broadens your taste buds as well because they all taste lovely, don't they? Yeah. And different. And I just think it just gets you back into nature. And again, it, it's another bit of self-care. And once you start making things, you know, it's all of a sudden you go, oh, I made this and it's like, and it's good for me. And if you know why, it's, it adds to the whole experience. It really yeah. does. Because you feel, you know, you've put that love into it. And, um, and again, you just, you know, going out into your garden and picking some herbs. Um, it, it's that whole thing, isn't it? It's the whole... Um, just it, it brings that kind of sense of well-being you it know does. and yeah. yeah and and that's i think you know um adding it to food and making teas and things like that it's just little things you can start adding into your already day to day so adding a you know at dinner at night just start adding some fresh herbs on top you know um or things like that you know instead of 
I always say with caffeine, um, I mean, I love coffee, I have to admit. So I will always drink coffee, but after midday, I try not to drink any because it does affect your sleep um, because it takes so long to break down caffeine and that's why it can affect sleep at night. So after midday, I usually, especially with clients, I'm like switch to herbal tea. And I'd have to say a lot of my, a lot of people think herbal tea is like the fruit tea that you get from the supermarket that has no taste. It might smell amazing, but it doesn't taste very nice. Or even some herbal teas that you get um, in the tea bag are not absolutely lovely. And what I do get with my teas is people like, wow, I love the taste of this. This is amazing. Yeah. Um, but switching to, rather than having a caffeinated beverage in the afternoon, just switching to maybe a herbal tea instead, or even, it doesn't have to be tea, even something like a miso soup, or, um, which I absolutely adore as well, yeah, or, um, you know, like a, a kefir drink or probiotic drink or something that's just something, it's saying you'd sit down, it'd be your time to drink that, if it's depending on whether you want it hot or cold, but just making like little changes. Mm. Um, and then, Rather than, you know, like I would never say to anyone, you can't have chocolate or you can't have caffeine or you, you've you got to stop this because if someone said to me, I can't have chocolate, it's the only thing I'd be thinking about until of I had course. it. And I know that like, um, it's so, it's the psycho psychology, isn't it? Yeah. I've just, um, whereas if I say, right, okay, instead of, instead of having that tea, why don't you try this tea or do this or something? And people go, okay, that's because they, they think, okay, that's, I could do that. Because I'm not losing my hot drink. I'm not losing I'm my drink. I'm just swapping drinking. one of them yep. after midday or something yep. like that. And I think that's what's so appealing about this approach. It's so different from saying, right, you need to cut out this, 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 and you need to start doing this number of minutes, high intensity work, and all of it. Whereas, whereas what we're talking about here is get yourself a basil plant from the supermarket or something like that, or a rosemary plant, yeah. and just snip something up, which is beautiful in itself because you get the fragrance on, oh, your, yes. on your fingers, which yes. is calming in itself and it puts you in touch with nature, even if you can't, even if you don't have a garden, you're still back in touch with nature. And then this is going to make your food look, look beautiful mm -hmm. and taste beautiful. It brings mm -hmm. so much flavor with these aromatics. Mm -hmm. And their medicinal qualities are astonishing. You mm -hmm. take something like rosemary, it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. And tastes so good. Yeah. Yeah, and smells so good. I know, and especially I think in the winter months, you know, all of these herbs that, like rosemary, um, oh God, oregano, thyme, thyme they're all yeah. antibacterial, antimicrobial, yes. so adding them into stews and casseroles and all of that, you're getting the benefit of your immune support mm -hmm. so um yeah there's just it's just yeah so many benefits and in fact i think that there's been some research done for example i think it's morocco it's somewhere where they have very meat heavy stew type slow cooked dishes and they add a lot of these herbs and spices and that's been shown to kind of mitigate or offset any effects of, of the meat because when you when you cook meat with herbs and spices it it just changes the whole yeah. chemistry and so they they really are medicinal and i think they're so often overlooked people think of the kale and the broccoli of the putting the greens in the shopping basket but they totally underappreciate that these beautiful herbs which are going to bring their food to life mm -hmm. are also medicine mm -hmm. absolutely um and i also think like again when people think of healthy they think of yeah raw raw juice diet they think of just green vegetables um it's very much like no meat you can't have any dairy you can't have any sugar you can't have any wheat and it's like it's quite a restrictive diet but yeah. that's what people think when they think they've got to be healthy they they you know that's how they sort of um that's how, sort of how they think really yeah and it sounds punishing doesn't and it, it sounds punishing it sounds yeah and and in a way like it is funny because I, I mean, I'm, I, diet isn't everything, again, when it comes to health. Diet is part of it, but it's not everything. And actually, the more obsessed you are with your diet, I actually think that can cause more anxiety and everything as well. But again, a, a lot of it is, go, is going back to wholesome food, um, but how it's prepared. So, 
kale is not meant to be juiced. You know, we're meant to cook kale. It's much better cooked because it bright, breaks down the phytonutrients, the goitrins that are in it, same in broccoli and um, cauliflower and all the cruciferous vegetables. The cooking process actually makes it easier for our bodies to digest. And, and then if you pair that with a, of a good quality fat, like um, butter or coconut oil, um, ghee or olive oil, Anything that's like fat soluble, which is usually vitamin A and K, D, are fat soluble vitamins and minerals, and they need a fat to be absorbed. So if you had kale and you had a bit of butter on it, and then you had it with some protein, you've got a balanced meal there, and you're gonna get, you're gonna absorb the nutrients from the kale because you've got some fat. So if you just had a raw kale juice, you're not actually going to benefit from it as much as you would if you'd cooked it and had it with a proper meal. And I mean, yeah, and it's just, I think if people, I think people think to be really healthy, it is, it's restrictive and you've got to be really disciplined. Um, and it's just not the case. You know, it's about the quality of the food. To me, it's about the quality and also how you prepare it. And I always go back to traditions on preparation. So take soybean, for instance. I mean, that is... Um, massive in Asia but they ferment soy so they know that a soybean is so hard to digest it's really high it's high in phytic acid so it binds to all vitamins and minerals it's like grains really hard to digest whereas if you ferment it like you would to make um, miso soup or soy sauce tempeh fermented soy as you would like with wheat grain you would make sourdough culture and make sourdough bread in that process of fermenting or cooking, um, you you basically um, help digest the food. They become more digestible. So the phytic acid starts to dissipate. Um, the coitrin start to go. All of these, ant, they're called ant nutrients. And so they become much more bioavailable. So when you eat fermented soy, which is how they traditionally eat it, because they know that it's not good to eat it raw, um, it becomes beneficial. Whereas unfermented soy, like soy milk, soy cheese, soy yogurt, is so hard for our bodies to digest. It's not a healthy alternative to, um, I mean, that's a whole other discussion that on dairy milk. That is a whole milk. other discussion about those horrible, horrible products, which people think are really good for yes. you. The, the soy custard i mean yeah my family used a lot of that horrible horrible soy well it's custard, which i won't yep. touch with a <laughs> but it's funny because when i studied natural medicine it was we were taught dairy is mucus forming it's so bad for you and it was all about soy so this was in the early 2000s and you know i was like dairy is bad and like I'd only be having soy everything and then it was only over time when more research came out about actually no is you don't want to have unfermented soy um and that dairy is not as evil as people can make out to be you know for certain people potentially but it's not the devil and um and I just realized early on that there is so much misinformation and you can you basically, whatever, I can't remember what it's called, is it confirmation bias? Wherever you read, mm -hmm. and if it agrees with what you think at the time, mm -hmm. yeah. you will believe it. And it's there's so much of that in just the health world anyway. So if you're on the understanding that dairy is evil, um, you will look up things that will confirm that that is the issue. And I just know after being in the industry, God, now for over 20 years, that nothing is good or bad you know um but there is it but it does go back to again i go back to the traditional way of how over years how have people consumed certain foods and um and again it's 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 more for me to do about stress and attitude to your life than it is about your food choices because you could be the most um you could be eating the most organic amazing diet but if you are stressed mm -hmm. out yeah. and anxious all day you are not going to benefit from that and um and yeah so it's sort of i think when i see clients as well it's sort of um a lot of it is that sort of education about about again i, I do believe in balancing your meals and making sure you're getting quality protein in there good you know vegetables and carbohydrate not being fearful of carbohydrates because those god I mean, do you remember the whole low carb phase at one point where there was like, you know, every every sort of decade, something's being um, demonized, like fats was really bad or carbohydrates yeah. or protein and things like that. Whereas actually we do need a little bit of everything. Um, but it's, 
but it's again it's it's choosing quality and where you're getting it from and um is more important i think than yeah for sure and i love what you described earlier with the vegetables with the butter on top because butter's so delicious isn't oh my it? God. especially if you get a really nice grass-fed oh my god salty butter it's oh. just the nicest thing <laughs> the best oh my god. thing I ever i love butter i love yeah. butter and yet with so many of my clients who i coach and um, when i go through what they're eating and this is after years of brainwashing you know by the time that they come to me and they'll they'll have their bit of lettuce and tomato if they're having a salad but wow do i have to struggle to get them to put a bit of olive oil oh. on that because like oh no 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 oil no and I try to explain that well actually you do need that good fat to actually absorb the vitamins yes and the olive oil is really good for you it's yes so super good for you an extra virgin yes. olive oil yeah it's, it's medicinal isn't it yeah but it is it's years of that brainwashing and and yeah. um you know vegetable oils being uh low in cholesterol and uh butter and tallow and all of that being really bad for you and saturated fat i mean even that was like massive when i was studying natural medicine about saturated fat was really bad for mm -hmm. you and we got taught that and then yeah. it's only over time and research that i've done from that yes. um that you realize gosh actually that's not the enemy yeah. um and yeah. and why it's so important i mean our hormones are made up from saturated fat cholesterol is what we need Absolutely. to make hormones yeah and having been too low on cholesterol is not healthy either no um, it's terrible yeah and yeah. so it's just it is it's all these misconceptions like, misconceptions they're so ingrained though they're oh. so ingrained i was chatting to a super super bright client the other day and he was telling me that he makes he makes sure to have ribena in his water because then he knows that he's had his full quota oh stop it <laughs> and i was like no 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 so that because but that's and i used to work for the food industry that's what they have done is pull the wall over people's eyes and say well you know we're selling you a, a really crappy sugary either sugary or with loads of um, artificial sweeteners I and mean, it's just pure evil junk that makes people ill but we've added Here's your vitamin C quota. And, and generally he was going out of his way to make sure. And, and yet, of course, you can get you can get these vitamins so easily with the most in the most beautiful food in a natural, delicious, accessible way, rather than trying to get it from the food industry with their nonsense that they push at us. Well, that's the other thing is that they fortify everything, you know, milks, dairies, everything. But it's like in uh, the bioavailability of that nutrient is like foreign to us like we're not going to get the benefit from it um and oh it, it's so i mean it's confusing enough being in the industry yeah. to not have actually studied it. Yeah. it it that's where you just clients come and they have no you know they're just like i don't know what and to how believe would they? How, how would they, they? you know I, I, I ha we've been so bamboozled by the food industry because like oh look at this look at this we've added vitamin k and vitamin you know and we've got a nice picture of a of a ball on the front of the cereal packet so don't don't look at the back with a little tiny thing with the ingredients you need to get a magnifying glass no and it's like shaking a shiny rattle at you isn't it and people fall for it and it's not because they're stupid or uninformed but it's very persuasive and unless you've actually educated yourself it's very very difficult yeah it is marketing decisions. it's just crazy how that can fool yeah fool us and also like even supermarkets they pay people big money to manipulate us manipulate us as we shop around mm. you know putting offers on in certain areas next to certain things it's not it's done on science it's not done yes. on, you know what I mean? it's like, not random is it's it? not random yeah so we can leave buying more than what we thought and mm -hmm. it's just and what you can write on labels can be so you know it could say um low in sugar but then you, there's a certain amount of sugar you can yeah. put in before you have to i don't know there's like it's so confusing it's so confusing yes, absolutely it, i remember once back when i worked in in food pr i w was managing it was a new product launch and it was a modified starch where you could i don't know how they'd modified it but it meant that you could put on the front of the packet home style or natural which was a, a complete fabrication I mean, there's nothing natural about these products but it was a modified in a particular way that they could get away with that and of course increase their sales because people want to buy something for their kids that says home style absolutely we're too busy everyone's too busy so this is very convenient 
and it plays on people's emotions like you want the best for your children well get this because it's homestyle like mama made yeah back in italy yep yeah yep absolutely and, and it's all nonsense <laughs> it's like they'll put a photo of people on the farm or something on the like it's yeah. just it does it's all plays with your emotions and That's what it. you nice picture of a chicken gambling yep. about in the field <laughs> When in reality, it's like, yeah, they're probably... It's never seen the light yeah. of day. Yes. Oh, no, it's horrendous. And I could talk for hours about it. Um, and we'll have to meet up again too, <laughs> where we can get mutually angry about it all. But just just to leave listeners with, with something where they could start, Nikki. So mm-hmm. if, if they're feeling... I, I, if people are listening thinking, I do feel stressed and I do feel like I need something in my day regularly, which is some sort of ritual... What would be your advice to people to where to start? Um, well, I would look at what you do. Look at things that you love. Like some people um, love a cup of tea and that's something they do already. Um, when you have your cup of tea, it might not be the herbal tea, but even if it's in the morning and it's like you love your English breakfast tea or whatever it is, just the whole process of doing it, like making the tea, sitting down. I, the other thing I do get is... Um, is to create like a really cozy nook in your house. Oh, a love, nook? Yeah. I like the idea of a nook. <laughs> but so it doesn't have to be the whole house. You can get yeah. that stage by stage. <laughs> but just somewhere that you can sit that's your space yeah. that is like you can keep tidy. The kids, the, the husband or whoever or whatever are not allowed in that space. And you can go there and you can... Like a haven. Like a haven, yeah. yeah. And it can just be, I say a nook because it could just be a corner of mm-hmm. a room. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you can sit there and read a book, listen to some music, light a candle, have a cup of tea. Um, that, that can be something. And a lot of people, uh, and that could be, and that's something that again, um, can be quite easy. And like even things like buying a little, um, pot of herbs or um, a cactus or some fresh flowers or even something from your garden you just pop it in like a milk bottle jar Mm. on the table I mean to me that's just I love things like that but bringing a little bit of nature inside into the home already creates I think a feeling of like you know just I don't know just I think it uplifts the mood Um, but yeah creating something maybe in your house that you can be your zone um, where you can just take five minutes and sit there in between your days if you work from home in your office I'd say getting out so maybe um, rather than sitting at your desk for lunch maybe going to the local park or um, walking around the block getting outside is really good for us to just to get fresh air Um, and especially before midday, getting any light on your retina helps with sleep at night. So it helps the circadian rhythm, um, listening to a podcast. So, you know, oh, like us, (laughs) but listening, I love listening to podcasts and, um, you know, either going for a walk or if I'm making things, listening to things like that really helps me zone out because what you want to do basically is get out of your head Mm -hmm. because it's your head that's causing all of these rip thinking the hundred million things that you have to do. And, um, and this is where, you know, with calligraphy, it doesn't have to be calligraphy, but something that it's called gets you in the flow. Ooh, and yeah. funnily enough for me last year, I started ladies cricket and ladies, cricket. ladies cricket. So That's like, as you unexpected. <laughs> no, well, it, it's so funny. It happened from I was, um, my youngest was playing rugby and a couple of the mums were off to then go to cricket practice. And they said, oh, you should come. And I sort of thought, oh yeah, I wouldn't mind. Like, I love team sports. And I thought, I wouldn't mind playing some cricket. I mean, I used to play a little bit at home, but more like, you know, on the beach, nothing, nothing at school or anything. And I had not thought about work. I had not thought about my to-do list. I had not thought about just any stresses that usually would come into my head nothing all i thought about was the game um i enjoyed it so much that i just went wow it was like um it just took me to a whole new different area i met different people the energy so i turned up every week and i i absolutely loved i can't wait for it to start again because it was it gets me in the flow i completely zone out and switch out and then we played on sundays again you're away for three two to three hours Um, but again, it's not a waste of time for me. I'm completely, it's the learning the new skill, um, which helps. And, but it's, it's that it's something that gets you out of your head, 
And that's what you want to try and find things that and do more of it. So things that you do that completely takes you out of your to do list yeah. um, and gets you, you know, and, uh, you know, that's where, you know, knitting can do that for people. Mm. Um, painting. Yeah. reading can as well because obviously when you read you're into the story aren't you and your yeah. mind goes away from all of the stresses so it's like it's just like, it's like listening to a podcast again I don't I'm just listening to the people talking I'm not thinking about anything else and um, that's where I think you know you don't have to be climbing a mountain or meditating you know on a mountain <laughs> and become all completely that, that's not health and that's not reality in this world yeah. It's just little snippets of that. You know, going for a walk with a friend rather than meeting for a coffee saying, why don't we yeah, walk or something? Yeah. Um, so again, it doesn't have to be hard. I just think try and find, you know, and some some people, again, love the bath. So have that bath. And I remember a lot of clients would say, oh God, it's such a treat to have a bath. Like mm. it was naughty almost. Mm. And I just thought, isn't that sad? Like this could be, this should be something that just, if you enjoy it and it helps you, you should just, you should just do it like this should just be part of your routine and um so and again that time guilt as you said at the beginning like i don't have time to do any of this like i'm feeling guilty for taking some time out um again it's i think when you when you realize that actually this is beneficial and this is calming my nervous system down and this is me time um you you know i think that guilt kind of starts to dissipate a bit as well um and yeah i think that's does that answer that. your question? Oh, it does. It does. <laughs> it, absolutely. And firstly, I think it's amazing that you started women's cricket. And I think it's very empowering for people to hear of someone starting something new and being brave enough to have a go and then getting into it. And that state of flow that you described, that's actually been shown to be a very important part of our happiness. Yes. It's very, very underrated, but we, we need to get ourselves regularly in that state of flow, however we get it, whether it's gardening, whether it's listening to music or playing music or, yep. or yep. art or whatever, but it is very, very important. And the other thing I loved about where you mentioned just bringing in any plant from outside, put it in a milk bottle. That's something that's so cheap, accessible, mm -hmm. quick. And it doesn't, you're not saying go and find, grow the most beautiful, exquisite, difficult, expensive <laughs> flowers. It could be a bit of any Ro you know, rosemary, random foliage, Oops. or anything. Yeah, any random anything. foliage that yeah. you can stick in a milk bottle yep. and feel better for it. And I think it's really important. It's a really important message that okay, there are these fabulous retreats that you can go to Thailand and pay an arm and a leg, you know, for for a week once a year whatever if, you, if you're able to afford that but i think we need to bring the focus back into the, our daily life we and shouldn't need to what, have to have a week no, off yeah because that is what's going to make the biggest difference yeah. to our our health our happiness our level of well-being is these very small acts that we work into our actual life where we live not dreaming about going to a, a retreat in bali <laughs> i mean wonderful if you can do that fabulous but but the reality is we're, we're here and we have lots of things to do, but these tiny, tiny things that take a minute or two minutes really elevate us. Yeah, and that's what I think I've taken away from this discussion today. So thank you so much. It's been a delight to chat to you, Nikki. I've enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs>